Oh, it's upside down. That was amazing. <laughs> Wow. This is a Phantom 19 offshore circuit racing class powerboat. And it's built for one thing, speed. <laughs> wow. So this is the aerotrain? Yes. It looks like something out of the future. <laughs> Physicist Andrew Steele checking out this supersized structure with a view normally reserved for the birds. Looking across the London skyline as we approach from the south, you can really see it's just crowded. There's buildings everywhere. It looks like a piece of crystal, a splinter coming up through the earth. It's amazing to think the first 21 stories of this concrete structure went up before they'd even finished the foundations below. This is a gyroscope, and to explain how it works, we're going to need one of these. The first problem is that the Earth and Venus go around the Sun in the same direction, which means that Venus only actually overtakes us on the inside once every 1.6 Earth years. The second and larger problem is that Venus's orbit is tilted with respect to the Earth's by an angle of 3.4 degrees, which means there are only two special points on the orbit where Venus passes directly between the Earth and the Sun. Picard wanted to travel high into the atmosphere to study cosmic rays, and he didn't want to work wearing a cumbersome oxygen mask. So he knew if he was going to do this and survive, he was going to have to take the Earth's atmosphere with him. He came up with the notion of a pressurised capsule. Once inside, the oxygen was supplied by liquid oxygen evaporating from a container, and the carbon dioxide was scrubbed from the atmosphere by a reaction with soda lime. It's incredible to think what it must have been like for those two men to look out of this tiny porthole and see, for the first time, the curvature of the Earth stretching out beneath them. With no accurate means of navigation, early voyages across our vast oceans were either for the very brave or the very foolhardy. Once you'd lost sight of land, it was very hard to know exactly where you were. In order to know precisely where you are, you need to know your line of latitude and also your line of longitude. And it wasn't until the 18th century that instruments were developed which allowed us to do this precisely. It's called a sextant. It works by allowing the user to measure the angle between different objects in the sky and the horizon. Imagine this circle is the planet Earth, and there aren't any continents. The whole planet is covered in ocean. This layer of water can get pulled around, for example, by the gravity of the moon. And this creates two so-called tidal bulges, one on the same side of the Earth as the moon, and one on the opposite side. Which means that Apple could single-handedly have developed nuclear fusion using just the profits on a single product line. Instead, they developed a big iPhone, <laughs> a smaller big iPhone, and most recently, a big version of their small iPhone that comes in a variety of different colours. That means if we shine white lights at all the colours onto a carrot, then anything that's green or more energetic will get absorbed by the electrons. And that is why carrots are orange. And there you have it. 